You know, recently, I and I'm sure a lot of people have just been obsessed with the Hunger Games lately. What with the release of A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes in cinemas only a week ago and has had so many fans eager to return to Pan Am. Whether that be through binging and re-binging the movies or watching loads of theories and explanation videos on YouTube, take your pick. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes tells the story of a young coronary in the snow and his rise to power. So in today's video, we'll be discussing the man himself and how his ultimate downfall at the hands of the Rebellion and the Mockingjay was truly poetic. All right, before we begin, a fair warning, there will be spoilers for A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes in today's video, so tread carefully. But with that out of the way, let's begin and go to the 10th annual Hunger Games where Coralina Snow is mentoring a certain Lucy Gray bed. She of course wins the games with a bit of cheating involved of course and is sent back to District 12 which is um, where she lives basically but Lucy Gray wasn't born there. Snow becomes a peacekeeper and is sent to District 12 to serve. Now, the one thing that Snow, or really anyone, considers to be the most striking thing about Lucy Gray is probably her singing. She's a brilliant singer, and in District 12, when the two are finally renewed, reunited, the song that she is singing is the Hanging Tree song. This is one of the most important aspects of this whole video, and we'll get to why later. So, at the end of the prequels, they turn on each other, and Lucy Gray tries to kill him with a snake. Then Snow uses his gun and shoots at her, maybe, maybe not killing her. But then she starts singing the Hanging Tree song, which the mocking jays copy distracting snow and really angering him now he hates mocking jays as we know from a battle of words and snakes so you know can you imagine and he absolutely hates him with a passion so like, can you imagine what it was like for him when the rebellion led by the mocking jay in katniss destroyed everything he strived to build the capital the games all of it or when Katniss Everdeen, the Mockingjay, walked out to fire one last arrow and kill him at his execution this is where like the poetic aspect comes in Lucy Gray was the catalyst for everything. She won the games and after being sold to sent to 12, ensured Snow would get an elite education with Dr. Gall. Lucy Gray was essentially the person who turned Snow into a monster. And the last thing that we hear from her, or rather that Snow ever hears or sees from her, was at the end of the prequel book where she starts the, the Hanging Tree song. So in the Mockingjay book, the last book, the Hanging, Hanging Tree, was literally like a war cry from the rebels. And when they were, you know, storming on the capital or the peacekeeper bases, they were singing the Hanging Tree song in unison. And it was really like it was a show of it was a show of um they, them being reunited together and fighting against the capital. It was basically like the song and the sound of the rebellion, a song created by Lucy Gray. Wow, you know that would have been chilling for Snow to hear that song ringing through the streets, giving him memories back to all that time. Speaking of, in their altercation at the end, when Lucy Gray tries to escape from Snow in the Battle of the Songbirds and Snakes, we see in the movie that Snow is following her footsteps. Now this is like I feel very intentionally done because if we go back a bit, we learn that Lucy Gray does actually get her name from the ballad, um, Lucy Gray. Written in, in the poem, a girl called Lucy Gray goes into a snowstorm, leaving her house and disappears. No one knows where she is as her footsteps came to an abrupt halt, and no one knows if she was still alive or dead. In Songbirds and Snakes, Lucy Gray does disappear, and no one knows if she's alive or dead. And in the ballad, she disappeared in the snow. The snow, Coriolanus snow. This is like so poetic, it's haunting. Because in the movie, her footprints that snow was tracking also abruptly, abruptly vanished. Wow. It, no, if that isn't intentional, then I don't know what is. Now, looking elsewhere to another aspect of this conversation, Katniss. Again, for Snow, when he saw her, the girl from District 12, lifting those berries at the end of the Hunger Games in a Rebellion, it was probably pretty haunting for him. I say this because the similarities between Lucy Gray and Katniss are countless. They were both the female district from uh, tributes from District 12. Both were the underdogs in the games and both came out victorious. Both had the ability to sing and to sing well. There are so many others and it would have been surprising of the least for snow in this situation so when katniss became the mockingjay the symbol of the rebellion and when she was walking out to execute him i don't doubt that he was very much reminded of lucy gray's former lover speaking of her there is one more thing if she survived there's at uh, the end of the ballad of songbirds and snakes there is a very strong chance that she went on to become someone like president coin alma coin the very woman who was the mastermind behind the whole rebellion and the destruction of the capital and the hunger games of course that you know not everyone subscribed to this theory and may not believe it but i'd say it's pretty likely you know some people might think that she's related to katniss but it makes more sense that she's um actually either alma coin or alma coin's mother like she knows exactly where to hurt Snow and she completely outsmarts him in mocking Jay, taking down his entire army. One of the main issues with this is that Coin is described to be around fifty by Katniss, but 
if I'm any good at maths or rather using a calculator, Lucy Pierre should be around 80 at this point. So this does leave a pretty big gaping hole. But remember, this is coming from Katniss, who doesn't really know coin at all. And in her district, District 12, with, you know, with the state of living, uh, you know, a 50 year old there could have easily, you know, looked like an 80 year old Katniss, which uh, if you get what I mean. So, you know, based on that, it's not too much of a stretch that this theory could be true and that Lucy Graybed could have gone to District 13 and become coin because we also know that at the end of A Battle of Songbirds and Snakes when Lucy Gray and Snow were planning to run away from District 12 they were actually heading in the in towards like the direction of District 13 and if that isn't enough we get a very interesting depiction of President Coin's eyes they're described to be like slush or you know like what is slush melted snow Again, with the symbolism of snow, as if it's Suzanne Collins just planting the ear Easter eggs perfectly for us to find. Another pretty ironic thing about Snow's fate is that after a ballad of songbirds and snakes, he basically made life in District 12 as hard as possible for the citizens there because of the you know the things that happened to him. This barely they barely had enough food or shelter or anything really, any of the essentials that you really need to live. Yet it was a girl from District 12 who managed to overcome him and managed to take down his full empire, Katniss. And possibly his former lover turned enemy in President Coin, Lucy Gray, slash Lucy Gray, if that theory is actually true, which I sincerely hope is because that would, you know, I'd really provide some real poetic um, moment. And that's what is so amazing about the whole story of the Hunger Games. It's not just like good versus evil, or like good wins and that's it. No, in the Hunger Games, you had Coin and Snow, two different people, but pretty evil in their own way. You know, Coin manipulating everyone and just doing everything to uh, to meet her own ends and even killing people of District 13 and of her own people just so that she could get what she wanted. You know, they were both working for themselves and in the end, they both got what they deserved, both meeting their deaths fittingly. Also, like this whole video and the idea of the poetry of Snow's demise is a detriment to how layered, intricate and precise Suzanne Collins' world of the Hunger Games is. And it really does take a deep dive in to see just how poetic President Snow's downfall truly was. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you want to see more Hunger Games content uh, here on Cinema Law, make sure to check out the channel because we do videos every week on your favourite fandoms, including Hunger Games, Harry Potter, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Pixar, and much, much more. Thanks for watching, and until next time, may the odds be ever in your favour.